got something to say. Do you see my shirt? I should wear this more often. Well, I know it's backwards, but it says pure joy. But I specifically wore it for today because my guest is so much fun. I love her. I just love her to pieces, and that's why I added in an extra day. Yes, I'm going to still do another one this week, but I had to get her. Just finished a week or so ago, she did a TEDx. I'm not sure, but I think she's already done that. And there she is. Woohoo! Hi. I was just bragging about you. What? Me? Yeah. I mean, nothing really, you know, just like how much fun you are. And so I had to wear my fun shirt for oh you, you know. It's, I love, the colors are awesome. I'll yeah, it's just it. enjoying it. I should wear it more often. I love it. So. You have similar brand. All right. Before we get into it, I got to read a little bit about All your right. bio. All right? Sounds good. And then we're going for it. Awesome. I got so much to ask you. First of all, I did not know you were a doctor, so there's that. <laughs> Dr. Jen Mott is a keynote and TEDx speaker, woo -woo, a school administrator, a university professor, she gets bored, and a circus performer out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Jen's interest in people, travel, learning, and teaching new things have interest Oh my God, to help companies, organizations, students, school staff grow because it turns out her ability to eat fire, juggle, and make balloon animals for nearly 20 years has come in handy in the real world as well. Passionate about people's big potential and getting outside of, you know, their own limits for ourselves, Jen helps others understand their world differently by surrounding themselves with the right people and having the confidence to try new things and or tap into old passions that have been abandoned. Oh my gosh, Jen, what the heck? What the heck? I mean, I knew some of these things, but I had no idea everything you're doing. But the one word that comes to mind is everything that you've told me here i bet you're passionate about it all i love it i feel so grateful that i get to do all the things that i love it's amazing yeah <laughs> yeah and i like that you said you know you've combined your interests mm. yeah so really it was an incredible journey of like i had this four-year college job working in a circus which is its own story in and of itself and then i yeah. i thought after those four years it was really fun while it lasted but I thought now's the time to grow up and become a teacher and um, I was really excited about that next step and I'm just super grateful to mentors and people in my life who said if you still like it if it's still giving you joy then you don't have to quit just because like you're into something else and so I kept doing it for a few more years teaching with the circus on the side and then um, once I moved into administration, it was the same thing. Like I have my doctorate now and I'm an administrator and now I need to really like, yeah. um, just go. And still it was that same concept of like, if this is fun for you, if this is a good outlet and passion of yours, why stop? And it was, it never felt in the way it never felt, mm -hmm. uh, Noxious or another thing I had to do. A lot of people talk about their weekends on Mondays. How was your weekend? And I would say I worked all weekend. But it was never like bemoaning that. It was like, I worked yeah. on it, then it was really fun and I enjoyed it. And so I kept doing it. And then over the years, I just saw an opportunity of like conferences, going to educator conferences, and people with their best intentions would just be sitting in these sessions, not enjoying them. And I was like, why are we doing this to ourselves? We can make these sessions fun and exciting. And so I started at at teacher conferences first, I started presenting where I was also juggling. And so I thought, is there a niche for adults to see juggling? Like, do they want to see it? Or is it just for the third graders that I've been performing to all my life? And it was really fun to just give it a try. And I felt so encouraged 
as the years progressed of feeling like adults also want to see it. They also want to be motivated and encouraged and see the cool juggling tricks. And so I have combined them and now I speak and present and go to conferences and other organizations and lead workshops and anything that can inspire and motivate people to maintain hobbies, pursue hobbies, because you never know how they can also, um, you know, accentuate what you already are doing in your career. I just want to kiss your cheeks for saying that. I mean, my whole life, people have told me, which you can imagine, yeah. ladies don't, don't act that way. You'll never be taken seriously as a businesswoman. Too peppy, skippy. You can't dance around. Blah, blah, blah. And I used to say to them, are you sure? <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. Like, why can't we play? Like, yeah. what? It just doesn't make sense. You know, you're stressed out. You have so much anxiety. You're overwhelmed. Doesn't it make sense to do more things that relax you and have fun? See, I don't know if you heard it, but I used to hear all the time. You might as well do it now because once you're an adult. Yes, it's so true. And, and truly, I felt like so many people said, they. that's why I appreciate that I had people in my life who said, I wish I would have kept doing this whatever there oh. is, but they left it behind. They let it go for whatever, insert whatever thing they were chasing. And they mm. hadn't done that in years. And they were like, man, those were the days. And so now here I am almost 20 years into a circus career where I'm like, these are the days, they're still the days. I don't look back at like, man, when I used to be in the circus, it's like, I'm still in the circus. And I still get to work with students and staff on a daily basis. And I get to combine talents by leading conferences, talking about empathy for learners, while also we're making balloon animals because we're all learning how to make balloon animals together. And guess what? They pop. And how do we respond to those frustrations and those mm. moments? And people are taking it seriously while also being able to exactly what you said, play and have fun. So God, thank you. Okay. So something you said at the beginning, and that's another story. Is there a way, because I do not know that story, and now I'm getting questions about it. Curiosity is peaking. How did you get involved in the circus? Because I don't know, or I forgot. No, it's okay. So um, the super quick story, happy to share more anytime, but I want to honor our time, is so I knew how to juggle as a kid, just in, like just as if anyone happened to learn how to juggle. So I was a student athlete. I liked playing sports. So I learned how to juggle, but not in any way, shape or form in the, with the idea that I was going to get paid for it. Right. Like I just happened to know. And, um, going into my freshman year of college, there's a huge event here in Cincinnati. So I'm coming at you live from Cincinnati, Ohio, and there's a huge event here in, for Labor Day. And it's a huge fireworks show on the river. It's awesome. The whole city comes together. It's a festival. And I was there just like any other year with friends just hanging out simply just to enjoy. And we um, saw some guys on stilts juggling and we thought, how cool, look at them. Let's go take our pictures with them. And we went over and we said, we wanna like, let's see you juggle and let's get a picture. And that was it. But I like talking to people and I like meeting people. And it was one of those moments that seemed seemingly innocent and innocuous, but it became yeah. a pinnacle turning point in my life because what I did instead of many people who just come up to stilt entertainers and either ignore and walked past right yeah. or they stop and take the quick picture and then they leave I engaged in a conversation so I just said you get paid for this like <laughs> this is so cool that you get paid for this and they said yeah we get paid really well it's a really fun job and I said well I can juggle too let me show you and I was just having fun with them so I'll show you Whoa. Are you going to be on stilts? So I, I got these. And so they handed me their clubs right then and there on the festival. And I juggled for them just like this. Nothing special. I just did this. And like barely. I barely could do it. I probably dropped within a few throws, but I did it. And they said, see, look at you. You can get paid for this too. And here's the big moment that I like to really highlight is so many people have done what I think, like what I've seen people do. Yeah. So many people would have said, not me. I can't get paid for it. Look at you. You're the ones yeah. who can get paid for it. Yeah. And what I've learned 
and over life is what makes anyone any more special. It's just the time and the energy they have put into something. That's it. Any one of us is capable of the thing. It's just us deciding that we want to be capable of the thing, right? And so thankfully, my little 18-year-old self, I heard them on stilts say, you can do it too. And I was like, I can? But of course, I thought, well, not me. You're the one on stilts juggling. And they said, no, we have practices once a week. You can come. And there I was eager for a college job. And I, instead of many of my friends over the years saying, not me, I certainly couldn't be the one, I took them up on it. I took them up on the invite and I went to a practice the next week and I had a blast meeting them. And uh, I went another week and another week and within one month I was getting paid to juggle and I couldn't believe it. I will never forget that first moment of walking around. Um, that was September and in October I was working my first event at a pumpkin patch and I will never forget just walking around being like, I cannot believe I'm getting paid to juggle. Like, this is so funny. Um, and it's, it was great. And it was just such a fun group of people that I met as a result. And uh, really amazing skills that now have obviously, you know, offered me a lifetime of opportunities. And I'm just so grateful to my 18 year old self, like not putting limits and just yeah. saying, I, sure, I will take you up on that offer. And I went and I went again and I went again. And over the years, I've gotten a lot of my friends or students or even my brother who've joined the circus over the years. And it's been so fun to bring other people into it and unlock their own potential. Um, so that's how I joined the circus. Wait a minute. You got your brother involved too? Did it for years. He did it for a few years. He and I got to work together. So our parents came out to little local events and saw their kids walk on stilts together and everything. And it was really a good time. Oh, oh, wait, 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 you did the stilts? We do. Yeah, we walk on stilts. We do. So I juggle, I walk on stilts, I do bullying animals, and then I eat fire and juggle fire. So also a fire performer. Okay. <laughs> All right. So many questions there, but let's just start with the first one I have coming in. You said you did it on weekends now, right? So that you're full time and then on weekends. Yes, yes. So yeah, in college, like back then or now? Now. So now, yes, I work full time at a middle school and I'm uh, assistant principal and athletic director. Uh, and then that's my day job, so to speak. And then in the evenings and on the weekends, I'll do circus events and then also moving into like more keynote speaking or opportunities with organizations, school districts, businesses to do some like motivational speaking, keynote speaking, workshops, team building, that kind of stuff using uh, some of the skills that I can bring in. So full-time job is middle school. Uh, yeah. school and athletic director running all their athletics. We have one of the largest middle schools in the state of Ohio, and it's a great district. And then um, I work as a university instructor as well. So those are my part-time jobs at Circus and teaching graduate level students who are interested in becoming administrators. Yeah. So Jen, that's how we met, because we met Heroic Public Speaking when you were wanting to take your keynote up to the next level. Why did you decide to do that? Because you're already a teacher, you're already involved in athletes, you're already in the circus. What made you want to combine it? So I felt like more in, so right before COVID hit conveniently in 2019, I launched the actual concept of like the entertaining educator. So the idea that we can bring the entertainment and the education together. Ah. And um, so that was in 2019 and I was all like, bring me to conferences and then COVID hit obviously and so I really focused on finishing up my dissertation. I graduated in 2020 um, with my with my doctorate and I am just I really like goals and I really like meeting people and that doctoral program was amazing and formative and such a great experience that by the time it ended in 2020 I was ready for what's next. And so when I found the speaker program, many people join speaker programs to help with their public speaking. But I felt like I had been doing public speaking through teaching and through performing for, you know, 15 years at that point. Um, but I felt like I wanted to join the speaker program because it was people from all over the world with all different backgrounds. And I wanted to test out my concept to see if it could expand beyond the world of education. Gotcha. So my real, um, I really wanted to see 
does my speaking and performance skill translate to a world outside of students and staff and schools? And thankfully, thanks to your encouragement and many of the other people, it's been really fun to feel affirmed in the work I'm doing. I've now launched a website. I got the TED Talk. Um, and graduating from that program last June was very just affirming of like, you're on to something. And I feel humbled to be so supported by like people in our group, but also, you know, beyond in the sense that we feel like connected and we're kind of uplifting each other's messages and skills. So that was my real reason. And that was, it was great. It served exactly the need that I had and I was really grateful for it. And I'm grateful for it. And I'm so glad that your message is coming through in such a unique way because I do believe it impacts so many people because they're shocked at first, you know, and then they hear your message, which is incredible, and it's just going to reach so many people, so many people. All right, that being said, tell me about your TEDx because wasn't it just a little bit ago, a few weeks ago? Uh, the TED Talk? I'm I'm sorry, it got cut off. One second. Yeah. The TEDx, yeah. yeah. When was it? A few yes, weeks ago? Just in the last three weeks, yeah. And, and? It, it was a really, really fun experience. It was um, really, I was super just honored for the opportunity. I applied in January yeah. and was grateful to get accepted in February. And I did it at University of Rhode Island. So I was really being uh, someone who's gone through college a few times and then also now teach at the college level. It was really fun to do it on a college campus and a new one at that. Uh, and I was super impressed by the team that put it all together and just really like loved not only my own opportunity to be able to share the message I had. My title was juggling career and passion, similar to what we are talking about, but also was so impressed by the eight others that I got to share the stage with. So the topic of our entire day was called the creative spark. And we all had some sort of creative spark to share. So mine was the juggling career and passion, but we had all different people from different walks of life yeah. as young as freshmen in college. And I don't know about you, but I was not standing on a TEDx stage or thinking about that my freshman year of college. So to yeah. see them and then be like, um, all different types of people in workplaces and in industry who were sharing their creative spark. It was a, an inspiring group. So phenomenal experience. And a talk should air in the next week or two, I think. I just submitted my description, and they said that it was uploaded to TED, and then TED uploads it on there. So, so we'll see in the next week or two. I think it'll be live. Yay! How perfect that topic for you. Oh my goodness. I mean, seriously. All right. They want you to juggle, man. Can you, can you, I mean, I know you juggled a little, but yeah. can you just do a little bit yes. of products made before? So you're opening. So I, I have a few things. You guys saw the clubs earlier. Um, but then I've also brought these juggling balls and um, so we can have a little fun with them. They light up and everything. So we're going to have some balls. So you can see it okay, right? We can see it perfectly. Awesome. So here we go. We can go like this. We can go inside out or backwards. All one way. All the other way. Back and forth. <laughs> In the middle. <sighs> Or on the outside, the other Whoa. And then one of my favorites is the yo-yo. Ready? Check this out. Look closely at the Checking. and see if you can see the tiny invisible string. Ready? Here we go. And whoa. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There's some. <laughs> yeah, you know what's priceless? This is what's priceless. Your face. <laughs> Lights up every single time. And it, it, you would think it's the first time like that you ever did this, ever, ever. Okay, do you got something else there? What else you got? Uh, yes, I do. I can do... Um, can you do me a favor just for me? I don't want to tell them what it is. But while you're doing it, I want you to do it because I love the way you say this about that if we're really special, we get to see this. Oh, I don't want to say what it is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I want them to hear that. It's a great message. Sure. And actually, I use it in my Creative Spark message. Um, so I can. Oh. So, 
Um, yeah, thank you. So before I juggle, so an important part of a juggling show is setting up what the audience does if you drop it. Because naturally, in a long juggling show for 30, 45 minutes, an hour, you're going to drop. We're not perfect. Yeah. I didn't drop because I did it quickly, but also it's tricks that I've practiced for years. And um, one of the ways that I've loved introducing the drop is I talk to the audience before I start by selling it as a trick that they want to see. So I change the mindset right away and I tell them, I teach them about the drop. So I literally, before I even start juggling, I drop the juggling ball. I ask the audience, what is that called? And naturally someone in the audience says a drop. And I'm like, oh, you know about it? It's incredible. It's the neatest trick ever done. And if you are lucky enough, and I mean lucky enough, to see me drop the juggling ball at some point in our time together, then you're going to turn to the person next to you and say, that was amazing. And then I practice. And so I practice by purposefully dropping the juggling ball. The audience says, that's amazing. And we have a moment. So then what happens over that hour, however long we're together, naturally when I drop it, instead of, if I don't set it up, people would be like, boo, or oh, or oh, like, or awkward silence. The whole audience erupts into, that's amazing. And it creates this moment where people are looking at each other, they're celebrating. And so then the lesson I take from that is, why are we calling that a failure, right? Like, why is that a mess up? Why are we calling the drop in our life when we drop the proverbial juggling ball? Why is that the mess up rather than, and what I talked about in the TED talk was make that the creative spark that propels us. Why can't the drop be the thing that takes us to the next level and that actually gives us an idea to do something different because we dropped the ball, now we're gonna do something different. And so it's a really fun, uh, it also, I can connect it with life as far as like, we need people to celebrate our failures, right? And to say like, yeah. no, but that was amazing because you tried or you were participating. How many times do I see students in our school who just aren't even trying? So to be able to engage them in a way where it's okay if you get the wrong answer or it's okay if you fail that test because you tried, you tried your best and then we learn from it and we get better, right? And so that's- yeah. Yeah. the drop as like a life lesson metaphor and it's been a really fun thing that seems to land haha <laughs> pun intended you get that it seems to land well with audiences all so. right right i just i have to have a true confession here yes i did sort of borrow that, that from you now i'm not a juggler yeah. uh -huh. but i fumble words and I mess up words like I don't say the right word yep. and so during my keynote I did kind of add it in like if you're lucky enough to hear me not say a real word just say that's awesome uh -huh. I love it. It, made, it made me and I did give you props uh -huh. it made me feel so much more relaxed it's true because then those moments that typically would have been like oh no, she's messing up, or oh, she's trying, or oh, oh like it's just this delicate topic. Instead, it's like yeah. this celebration of like, you did it, it's okay. <laughs> she messed the word up because I have a tendency to make up words that don't exist. I love so it. now they're not, and I got that from you and I've been wanting to tell you it landed. Now, I don't know if I'll do it again, but it was so much fun to add that in. Well, you know? I love that. I also think it creates it's a moment for the audience that's memorable and you want whenever we speak we want our audiences to feel like they're part of it and there's like a collective experience that they feel rather than just getting something from you and those moments of them all saying the same thing at the same time is very fun and like there it brings levity to an otherwise like seemingly like frustrating moment and then what i love is by the time they finished saying that's amazing and laughing I've already picked up the juggling and I'm still juggling. They forget it even happened, you know? So you are welcome to take that. There is no it intellectual. Was, there. It was perfect. I was just like, oh, because some of the words, I, I just mess up. Now. Yeah. But, okay. So this is what we're going to end on. You ready for this? Right. I want you to juggle and tell us how they can find you and book you for workshops or keynote speaking engagements or anything else. But I, can you do it with the juggling? I can, yes, I will. I'm gonna do one thing, because if I comment, everyone will see it, right? Yep. Okay, 
Um, so I'll talk about this. Okay. So I just put in the website and we're going to see how this goes. Okay. There's some, can you hear me? Okay. I can hear you perfectly. So as part of developing the Ted talk, I also developed a website. I worked with an amazing web developer who got it all set up for me. So I now have an official website to direct people to it's right there in the comments. And of course, my Instagram is right here. People are welcome to follow me on here. Um, our company for the circus, I always like to give them a shout out because they got me my start, is Cincinnati Circus Company. So you can find them at CincinnatiCircus.com or on Facebook or on Instagram at Cincinnati Circus. And I'm also just on Facebook or LinkedIn under my name, Jen Mott. I'm not too hard to find. And then my TED Talk will be live in the next week or two. So if you search my name with a TED Talk, then... I would love for you to see it and also comment on it or like it so that people will also be able to see it. There's my, there's my spiel. So yay! And by the way, I've been doing this for years and this is my first juggler and you know how much I love first people. Woo, woo! I'm on. Jen, thank you so much for being on the show. And for those of you who are coming in and they said they didn't say the beginning, don't worry about it. When we're done here, I will record it. And then my guy will post it on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and the website. So you can watch him from beginning to end, which would be awesome. We would both really appreciate you sharing and like it. It would mean the world to us. And until next time. Thank you so much for coming on, for letting me come on. And I really appreciate all the joy you bring to the world. So I'm so glad that we've connected. And I just really appreciate you even letting me on. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. It always brings a big smile to my face. Thank you, Jen. And until next time, you know what I'm going to say. Kittles! <laughs> Bye.